These days, it seems like every AAA developer is intent on making their games longer and longer. It's getting to the point we're gonna have to start leaving some story campaigns to people in our wills because we're likely to run out of time in this life to get it all done. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, and I'm all for getting my money's worth when it comes to content. I am from Yorkshire after all, but sometimes I just don't have the brain space to sink days of my time into a game, and I need a story that I can play through beginning to end between getting home from work and going to bed. For this list then, we're taking a look at some great games that won't take up your entire weekend and can be completed in just a few hours. Don't be fooled, however, because like me, what they lack in size, they more than make up for with excellent narratives, engaging puzzles, and exciting gameplay. That, that simile got away from me there, actually. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 great games you can finish in an evening. Number 10. Papers, please. Five hours. This one may be a little more dependent on what sort of time you actually like to go to bed, clocking in at roughly five hours. However, if it's a Friday night or you don't need to be up too early the following day, you could do worse things with your time than to play through Papers, Please. Released in 2013 and developed by just one man, Papers, Please sticks players into a small border control booth and charges them with ensuring that only authorized people are entering the fictional glorious country of Astotska. Things start out fairly simple. You just need to check passports to ensure they're all valid and have the right photo on them. If the people are asked Dotskin, great, come on in. If not, well, maybe try again tomorrow, friend. Each day, the rules will become progressively more complex, though, and you'll need to keep on top of them if you've got any hope of earning enough money to pay for your rent, feed yourself and your family, and buy them the medicine they need. It may sound like an exercise in mundanity, sorting papers around on a desk and saying yes or no, but you'd be surprised at just how gripping the game can get, especially as discrepancies get harder to spot and other parties start to influence your decisions on who to let in and who to turn away. Glory to our Stotska! Number 9. Oxen Free. Four and a half hours. Recently, there have been a number of great supernatural mystery games, with titles like Life is Strange engrossing players in the enigmas of a small town. The issue is that many of these games tend to be on the longer side, which is understandable when you've got multitudes of characters and complex plot to flesh out. But fitting them into a busy schedule can be a bit of a pain. If you prefer your mysteries to be a little more bite-sized, though, then have a crack at Oxenfree, the 2016 debut from Night School Studio. I won't go too much into the plot, but suffice it to say that when teenage girl Alex embarks on a trip to a local island, a load of spooky stuff starts going down, and it's up to her friends to figure out what the flip is going on. Pardon my language. Despite taking players under five hours to complete, Oxenfree packs in a lot throughout its short runtime. The characters are well fleshed out, the story is gripping, and from a purely aesthetic point of view, the game is absolutely beautiful, which in our opinion is enough reason alone to give it a few hours of your day. Number 8. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture four and a half hours. When a game is bold enough to spoil itself right there in its own title, you know you're going to be in for a wild ride. Released in 2015 and developed by The Chinese Room, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture plonks you into an idyllic English village whose inhabitants have all mysteriously disappeared and tasks you with finding out what's happened. I mean, obviously, everybody's gone to the rapture, but the story itself focuses more on why and how everyone's gone there. It's best to go into the game knowing as little as possible so you can fully immerse yourself in the beautiful world. Don't expect much in the way of traditional action, as you won't be fighting off hordes of enemies. Instead, you'll find yourself wandering through your surroundings, trying to piece together exactly what's gone on. Though the game clocks in at under five hours, the pace throughout is gentle, so you can't rush from one objective to another, and must take your time in uncovering all of the village's secrets. The thing is, when a game is as visually stunning as Everybody's Gone to the Rapture and features cast members from radio drama The Archers, you'll find yourself not minding the stroll quite so much. Number 7. Little Nightmares. Three and a half hours. Survival horror has really seen quite the resurgence in the past few years, with the likes of Alien Isolation and The Evil Within swooping in to scare the proverbial knickers off anyone brave enough to give them a shot 
whilst wearing knickers. If you'd prefer to pack as many spookums into as short of a time span as possible, however, then you could do worse than turning out the lights and allowing little nightmares to scare the heck out of you. The aim of Little Nightmares is to help Six, a tiny raincoat-wearing girl, to escape from the Moor, an iron vessel in which she is trapped, which also happens to be exclusively inhabited by monstrous twisted beings. Being so small, Six has little in the way of offensive capabilities, so the only way to avoid the never-ending parade of nasties is to stealth your way around the environment and, if necessary, just hide. In spite of its short runtime, Little Nightmares brings to life a truly frightening, Burton-esque style world, through the use of its hauntingly beautiful art style and deeply atmospheric sound design. It may take less than four hours to play, but it's gonna stick with you long after the credits roll. Garlic and sugar. Oh, oh, anyone hear that? <laughs> Number six, Inside, three and a half hours. Sometimes you need to experience a horrible dystopian nightmare in order to realize that your life isn't quite so bad, but exploring the depths of rapture or fighting off a bunch of headcrabs just takes so gosh darn long and we want to be in bed by 10pm at the very latest. Fret not though, because you can still enjoy all of the horrors of a dystopian hexscape in under four hours by playing through Inside, the puzzle platform adventure from the good people that brought you Limbo, which incidentally can also be played through in less time than it takes to watch the extended edition of Return of the King. Every time you think it's over, it just carries on! Aesthetically and atmospherically, Inside is very similar to its older brother, eschewing fancy graphics in favor of a simpler art style with a mostly monochromatic color palette to create a world that feels stark, imposing, and somewhat alien. In terms of plot, it also sticks with a narrative that can be left open to interpretation, rather than one that's spoon-fed to the player. To add to the spookiness of the whole affair, the soundtrack was created by passing sounds through a real human skull, which is a totally normal thing to do and is not weird in the slightest. Everyone go and support this game. Sounds like the developers could do with the money. Number 5. Portal. 3 hours. When the orange box was released back in 2007, most people weren't expecting much from either Portal or Team Fortress 2. After all, the star of the show was Half-Life 2. As it turns out, however, both of the additional games are actually pretty good, to say the least. And not only that, but Portal can be finished in just a few hours. The premise is simple. Armed with a gun that fires a pair of portals, you must navigate the Aperture Science Enrichment Center and complete a series of test chambers. This will usually involve utilizing the portals to cross rooms, jump large distances, or move your trusty companion cube around the room, to whom nothing bad happens ever. N no, no, don't show me that footage! The puzzles start out fairly simple, but quickly become trickier and more dangerous, <laughs> requiring that you not only successfully complete the test chamber, but do so whilst being fired upon by a bunch of friendly but very much not friendly turrets, all accompanied by the sarky remarks of malevolent AI, GLaDOS. The chambers, however, are the perfect balance in terms of difficulty, each requiring enough brain power to keep you engaged with the game, but without being completely obtuse. One or two will have you scratching your head for a little while, but as soon as you figure it out, you'll feel like a proper genius. Now, um, someone say something about cake. Where's the cake? Number 4. The Room. Two and a half hours. If you've only got a couple of hours spare but have a hankering for some really good puzzles, there's no need to crack out the Sudoku. No sir. Or madam. Originally developed for iOS but later enhanced and ported to PC and Switch, The Room sees players transported to an old mysterious house in which they'll find a note from an anonymous source that invites them to try and open the safe in front of them by solving a series of puzzles. The game itself doesn't really come down to much more than that, and though more is revealed about the nature of the safe's contents and why they came to be secured with such rigor, the enjoyment is in the journey, not in the destination. Though some of the puzzles will prove to be a bit tricky, none of them feel unfair, so those well-versed in brain teasers and escape rooms will find the game delightfully challenging. Besides, considering the room can generally be picked up on Steam for less than the price of a fancy caramel macchiato, there's really no reason not to spend a couple of hours trying to find out exactly what's in the box. Not to mention that, unlike the caramel macchiato, it won't keep you up all night or upset your tummy. Oh, you're a delicate little flower, aren't you? 
Number three, gone home, two hours. After a long, hard day at work, you might not be in the mood for a game that requires fathoming out a bunch of puzzles or getting into fisticuffs with other people. Believe me, we have enough of that at the office, thank you very much. Upon returning to her family home in 1995, protagonist Katie Greenbrier finds that her mother, father, and younger sister have all disappeared, the latter having left a note on the door imploring Katie not to investigate what's happened. Over the course of Gone Home's two-hour run, time, players get to explore the Greenbrier household, and using objects and notes found throughout the home, piece together exactly what has happened to the family. Though simple in both concept and execution, Gone Home is able to tug on the heartstrings of players by weaving a narrative that's as beautiful as it is tragic. There's not a whole lot of interactivity to be found in the game, the title was the one that spawned the term walking simulator, but that's kind of the point. As long as you go into the experience, knowing what to expect from a gameplay perspective, you won't be disappointed by anything that Gone Home delivers. Number 2. What Remains of Edith Finch, 2 Hours You wouldn't think it possible to pack tragedy, mystery, and a cursed family all into one two-hour package without things feeling rushed, but somehow, What Remains of Edith Finch manages to do all of that and still leave itself plenty of time to give you the feels. Ah. Another indie darling of the walking simulator persuasion, What Remains of Edith Finch takes players to the Finch family home to try and uncover the secrets behind an alleged curse that sees all but one child of each generation die young. The whole game plays out through entries in a journal which has been written by Edith following her journey home in 2017. Throughout a series of flashbacks, players will see how the supposed curse has impacted the family and try to understand why this keeps happening. I won't say much more than that for fear of spoiling the whole thing, but rest assured, you will be gripped from start to finish. Again, if you're looking for a game with a lot of action and interactivity, this title might not be the one for you, but if you're after a story driven experience that unfolds in just a couple of hours, it might just be worth taking the time out of your day to enjoy it. And number 1, The Stanley Parable, one and a half hours. I feel like in most cases, if I asked you to buy a video game that costs about as much as a good bottle of wine but lasts only an hour and a half, you'd probably give me some funny looks or call me awful names. I highly recommend, though, that on this occasion you eschew that vino in favour of the Stanley Parable. Not only will you get to forego the bad headache the following morning, but you'll also get to enjoy probably the best 90 minutes of your video gaming life thus far. At the beginning of the game, players meet Stanley, an office worker whose rather mundane job it is to simply follow keyboard commands sent to him on a computer screen. When the commands suddenly stop, however, Stanley decides to leave his desk, accompanied by a narrator, whose instructions the player can choose to follow or not. Once you've left the desk, what happens is completely up to you, with the various choices leading players to one of 16 different endings, all of which can be found in less time than it takes to roast an average-sized chicken. The best news is that at time of recording, an ultra-deluxe edition of the game is in development, so if 90 minutes just isn't enough Stanley Parable for you, fret not, because there is more on the way unless it's been cancelled by the time this video goes out, in which case I can only apologise.